keep in mind that all of the reasons for the recent sell-off are still here. That includes the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the COVID lockdown in China that will continue to impede the supply chain, Fed tightening, and accelerating inflation. Oh, and did I mention inflation? And with that, I present you with this week's U.S. equity market performance. U.S. stocks rallied on Friday to post a fourth consecutive day of gains. All major indices delivered solid weekly advances. The S&P 500 closed higher by more than 1.1%. The index also posted its first weekly gain in three weeks, and the biggest since November 2020, rising more than 6% from last Friday. The big news this week, though, was the Fed opting for a 25 basis point rate hike. Perhaps this means the Fed is charting a path towards six additional rate hikes this year. That would bring rates to about 2% this year and maybe up to 3% next year. It all depends on what inflation does. But keep in mind, when the inflation shock is over and when the Fed rate shock is over, we begin the recession shock. So my friends, we have that to look forward to. Two charts today, beginning here with the six-month daily chart on the volatility index. And you can see in the upper left, the symbol is dollar sign VIX using stockcharts.com. Now, interesting to look here, say late October into November here in the middle portion of the chart, you can see that those two lows were here, but the next lows were higher. This level here, this level here in early February, and now we're at this point in here. So are we going to continue down and maybe break through here to a lower low? Are we going to do another stair step at this point, which may serve as a platform for a higher move in the VIX? Well, we don't really know yet. But one thing is for sure, looking at this top here, which was uh, a couple weeks ago, from that point on, the VIX started to calm down. We talked about this. So when it started to calm down, that did give you advance notice that the market may head up, and it did. So right now, it looks like the VIX is still coming on down. Moving through here, we're at 23.87, but in the lower portion of the chart, you can see the MAC, the fast line, which is black, the slow line, which is in red, but the fast line is still heading on down, and there's a fair separation between the fast line here and the slow line here, which means we probably still have more downside or sideways trading to do before there's any perhaps uh, hesitation in the stock market on the way up. And for those that don't know, when the VIX moves down, when it calms down and heads lower, that means the stock market heads up. So let's now go to our charts. And we're now looking at the six month daily chart on the spiders, the SPY, and the close on Friday was 444.52. And looking at that chart after some difficult consolidation here, we finally get that move up and through the 20 and the 50 EMA to this level here. So we're starting to complete that W formation, which has been long in the making, but we're heading on up. And so I'll take it. It's a win. Moving down into volume, I'd like to see more volume here, but uh, it's only tepid volume, but again, I'll take that as well. Into the MACD, you can see the maximum negativity at that point, the improvement here. Finally, this fast line was trudging along just barely below the slow line, the fast line in black and the slow line in red. Finally, the fast line gained enough strength and steam and popped right on out. We're still under that zero line mid-level, so I think the market needs to gain some more strength, and you can see that again in the volume. Here in the histogram, you can see pretty much the same thing, but definitely nice move on up. You can see the market improving there. Certainly here, the consolidation and then the pop into the price rate of change. 
pretty much the same thing. This consolidation did take a while, but uh, it finally did work out the way we were somewhat anticipating at least the probabilities. There, the relative strength, we're at a moderate 65.17, definitely above that 50 or midline. Looks like it wants to head higher, but I think we may have a sawtooth down here before we continue on, but definitely improving. Moving on down to the stochastics, much the same thing. It wants to head up into that overbought territory, not quite there, but as we can see here, the Williams is in that overbought territory between that negative 20 and 0. And each time we head up there in the Williams, we've been able to stay up there for a while, such as there, here, 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 and then even longer during this time frame here. I don't think we're going to be up there that long. As you can see, looking at these moves, this was a nice big move. This was a moderate move. This is a smaller move. And I am looking for something perhaps also small, but we'll see. We'll have to wait and see how this evolves. But the evolution, we need to take a look at the price chart back here. As you can see, the next level I want to see us get to is this level right here, somewhere just uh, under 460. We need to move up there. This is going to be a resistance on the way up. If it can get up and above, then it becomes resistance on the downside. But we need to get up and above first. But ultimately, we're looking for this level here. And as I told you, on the monthly chart, things are looking a bit iffy. So we'll watch this move as we continue on up. Hopefully, we can get back into that channel line that was kind of moving through like that. But it's going to take a lot to get above here and maybe above that 480. So we'll watch, see how the market strengthens and how it evolves. But that's our next uh, serious point in the market that we need to pay attention. So keep your eyes out. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.